Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Car Moon where I talk about and review camera tech, gadgets and smart gizmos. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. But today we'll be talking about the newest update to the G9 and comparing it to the G90 and the differences if you're looking to get into filmmaking. Let's jump into it. So if you aren't aware, Panasonic have come out with a update to the G9 to be a huge upgrade to the camera, making this very closely spec'd to the GH5. Seriously, Panasonic, if it wasn't already hard enough to make my first video on this topic, you've only gone and made it tougher. So what does this mean if you're looking at the G90 as a video camera? as they are both very similarly priced. If you look at the prices on Amazon, for example, the G9 is only priced at around 850 pounds and the G90 is priced at 900 pounds. So not a lot of difference. So why would you go for the G90 over the G9 with all these spec upgrades that the update brings to the G9. So let's run through the specs and talk about what camera would be most suitable for you as a content creator, as I do think that there is a market for both cameras. First of all, let's go through some of the similarities. Both have got a 20 megapixel, no low pass filter, micro four thirds sensor. Both have got a headphone jack and microphone uh, port. Both have got fully articulating screens as well. You also get HDMI output on both, but the G9 does have a full size HDMI port. Moving on to the G9. The G9 update means that this camera now supports animal detect utilizing advanced AI technologies. So that's animals, including cats and dogs and birds. They can all be detected in addition to humans. The focus frame is automatically set on the target subject by analyzing the size and position of the target subject in the viewing image. The camera continues tracking these subjects even when their backs are turned to the camera. Well, according to Panasonic, but I've looked at some of the test footage and it seems to hold up very, very well. You are also able to switch the focus between the subjects by using the joystick in the animal detect mode. You now get near shift and far shift functions on the G9. Near shift preferably focuses on a subject nearby while far shift preferably focuses on a subject further away. Focus peaking function is available in manual and any of the auto focus modes. So nailing focus in any of the modes is now less of an issue on the G9. And continuous autofocus capabilities is available on the live view screen in creative video mode or in any other of the recording modes when the recording uh, area is displayed. These are really good autofocus updates to the G9. The major update is the recording formats for the G9 4K 30p and 25p 422 10 bit internal recording is now supported. Hooray! A lot of people have been waiting for this update. 4K 60 slash 50p 422 10-bit HDMI output is also available and luminance levels for 10-bit uh, video are also supported. Variable frame rate shooting is supported, so full HD up to 180 FPS or 4K up to 60 FPS. We now have manual exposure for the variable frame rates, but still no 120 frames per second. We only get 180 frames per second at 1080. HDR recording is now supported and a huge update for us filmmakers, we now get vlog recording and a waveform monitor available with a paid upgrade software key on the G9. We also have got exposure offset adjustment in the custom menu, which enables you to uh, adjust the standard exposure value for all metering modes. We now get MOV recording, which is far better of a format to record than MP4 or AVC HD. 4K 60p 
is still limited at 10 minutes of record time and the 4K 30, 25 and 24 frames uh, in 422 10-bit still has a record limit of 30 minutes. That is also the same in 8-bit recording as well. There is no 24 FPS 1080p in MP4 or MOV on the G9 in any of the bit rates. So if you want to film in 1080p 24 FPS, you will still have to go for either the GH5 or the G90. This is a really weird limitation that Panasonic have uh, set on the G9. Nothing to do with the update, but the G9 has some great features like fast autofocus, even compared to, to the GH5. And also we have got six and a half stops of stabilization when paired with a stabilized lens which again is far better than even the video-centric GH5, let alone the G90. We also get dual SD card slots on the G9, which we do not get on the G90. On the G90, there are things that you are missing. There is no 10-bit or 422 recording internally. You can get 422 8-bit external recording using the HDMI, but not as good as the G9. You also get no 60 FPS in 4K. You do get Vlog L on the G90 without a paid upgrade, however, so you do save yourself between 80 to 90 pounds. So if you are on a tight budget, that 80 or so pounds uh, could go towards some gear instead. In terms of record times on the G90, all 4K and 1080p modes are unlimited, unlike the G9, which has limitations on pretty much every useful resolution. On the G90, you also get manual exposure settings in the 120 frames per second 1080p. But unlike the previous video, the G9 also gets manual exposure in high frame rate mode. However, echoing what I mentioned before, there is no 120 FPS on the G9 and the 180 FPS on the G9 looks worse than the 120 FPS on the G90. So if you want really nice, clean slow-mo, the G90 still holds the crown between the two. The reason for this is that the 180 frames is filmed at the same bit rate as the 120 frames per second on the G90. So the G90 has better quality slow-mo. Well, that's my kind of theory anyway why it looks better. So we spoke a lot about the specs and the numbers but what are my recommendations and which camera is better? If you are doing vlogs and short films or travel style videos in my opinion the G9 is the way to go. The reason I say this is you normally won't be filming for more than 10 minutes anyway so if you use the 4K60, you can really use it and slow it down in post. And even the 4K24P 10-bit gives you much more flexibility and the 30 minutes of record time will be more than enough for you. Even for YouTube videos like this, as long as you keep an eye on how long you're recording for uh, and how long you've been speaking for on the G9, this will do a great job. The image stabilization will also be better on the G9 than the G90. So if you're holding the camera towards you and filming, the image should be a little more stable. You now get manual exposure in high frame rate recording, making this more useful as well. You also get dual SD card slots, which might be important if you're traveling as a backup. The autofocus is slightly faster at 0.04 seconds compared to the 0.07 seconds on the G90. So for those run or gun moments, the G9 should lock on much quicker. So who should get the G90? Because the G90 has no dual SD card slot, 
10-bit recording or 4K 60. The G9 seems like the best camera for everyone. Well, for anyone who wants to get into wedding, interview or lecture style of recordings, the G9 would be a little bit difficult to work with. Not impossible, but difficult. The G90 has got unlimited recording, making this great in any long style format of recording. If you're filming weddings, for example, they can go on for more than an hour for speeches and, and stuff like that. And you do not want to miss a single moment of it when you're giving the final product to your client. The 4K24 is slightly cropped, but with the right lenses and speed boosters, you can work around this. You do get Vlog L pre-installed too, so you do not have to purchase another thing when you're already spending a lot of your money on the camera. Most people who film weddings or professional work normally do not rely on autofocus. So having fast autofocus won't be a deal breaker. Plus it's not like the G9 is miles ahead anyway. It is a shame we do not have dual SD card slots on this camera, but neither do more expensive professional cameras like the Canon EOS R or the Nikon Z6. The unlimited 4K recording is a big seller here and does make this camera very useful in certain situations. We also have got 24 FPS in 1080p for fast video production. But echoing my point from my last video, there are much better pure 1080p cameras. So if you're not interested in any of the 4K features, I wouldn't recommend either of the cameras. But there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. But as always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on whether you agree or disagree with any of my points and if this video helped you with your decision. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really does help me out. If you want to see more content, please hit that subscribe button and join the Tech Car Moon family like so many of you already have. And if you haven't already, please follow me on my social medias like Twitter and Instagram. And I also have a Patreon account all named Tech Car Moon. There will also be links in the description below and they support the channel as they are affiliated. But as always, everyone look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.